Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I want to show you um, an IP core that I wrote in VHDL for converting the magnitude of a signal from linear to dB. So I did this based on an idea which was um, it's available on the internet on a website called uh, DSP Guru. I'm going to link it in the description. And uh, there is a very good method or an explanation um, um, there on the website written by uh, Ray Andraka from Andraka Consulting. It's an old idea. It's very, very nice to implement in FPGA. Um, I did some trick. I didn't actually use exactly the same methodology. Uh, I just brace yourself. This is a very boring video. Loads of math. So, uh, yeah, let's go to it. So this method is actually taking that number and in order to calculate the logarithm it's looking at two terms here. So we have the mantissa and we have the exponent. The exponent is telling how big is the number, the mantissa is actually the actual number. So mantissa has some properties because it's normalized to the base, to the number 2. So it's between 1 and 2. And then we have the exponent which is basically telling how big is the number? So you know we know that every bit in this number that we try to make the logarithm, it counts for 6 dB. So if we know where our MSB is, we can actually multiply by 6 dB and we can calculate a, um, let's say, a, a rough value. And then if we look at the mantissa, we can calculate the final value depending how many bits we take from the mantissa. So I'll, I'll make a very, very quick example here. So, right? so I'll, I'll just put a 20 logarithm of, look, I have it here actually, 20 logarithm of 3000. Right? You see, it's 69 point something dB. That's what the calculator says. So if I look at this number in the binary format, 3000 in, uh, as binary, you see this, this is 3000 in binary. So we can see that the MSB is on position 11, on the 11th position, right? So we kind of, we know that each MSB counts for 6 dB. So we can say that that's a 66 dB plus some change, right? So well, we're not far, it's 69. If we can calculate from this, that plus change, if we can calculate a finer granularity value here with some decent precision, we can actually fall on this number. Okay, so I'll, I wrote a presentation. Um, I hope I didn't lost uh, half of the audience by now. Okay, so why we do this? We want to display um, logarithmic values like a spectrum analyzer. So we want to display signals, the signal energy in uh, on the logarithmic scale. Now it has to be fast enough, 300 megahertz. Um, it has to be simple and predictable. Now this is what we have so far. So we have the I signal, the Q signal, we square them, we add them together, extract the square root. Now we get we can get away uh, without the square root and I'll show you in the map. So this is what we want to have. I, Q squared, added together, somehow magically convert them into logarithm. Now you see here that actually the the the, the square root has disappeared, that uh, core core has disappeared, and you see here that this is actually not how it's supposed to be. The correct formula is with 20 in front here, and I'll show you what's the, where is the simplification, how I got rid of the of the cordic. So here, uh, this is the math. So this is the formula for extracting the energy from the from the magnitude. So it's 20 multiplied by the logarithm of magnitude. Now the magnitude is always positive. Why is positive? Because this is squared, this is squared, they add together. Those are positive numbers. They're always positive. Right? So um, the square root can be represented as this term uh, at the power of 1 over 2. So because we have the logarithm, this 1 over 2 comes in front and is getting simplified with the 20. So this 20 multiplied by 1 over 2 becomes 10. Hence the 10 here instead of 20. Instead of 20 here, like in the formula. So I go further. So I'll, I took an example here. 20 uh, log of 3000. So 3000 is the number we want to convert in uh, from linear, linear decimal 3000 in logarithm. 
I did this using the calculator and I the calculator tells me this is the value 69.54 blah, blah, blah. now 3000 in decimal represented as a digital number it's this 16 bit vector of bits now the first thing is actually to figure out the exponent how big is this number how do we know how big is this number well there is only one way we need to check where the msb is now how can we can figure out where the msb is we can shift this number towards the msbs and count and count when the msb is going to hit the left uh, most uh, bit but this is i don't want this method because depending how, how where those bits are located i need to shift maybe four bits maybe five so it's not very predictable and it's dependent on the on the the number now i want another method where i'm actually looking at this and exactly like humans i'm looking at this oh that's on the 11th position something like this so uh we need here a detect uh, a bit a msb detector now the moment we do, we know the well, msb on which position is at the msb we know that the every bit counts for for 6.02 db so if we multiply the position by 6 we kind of roughly know uh, the value a course value in db with a resolution of 6 db so our error is going to be 6 db so we can actually pre-calculate and use the, use the position i mean the position position can be 0 or it can be 15 in our case so it can be represented on 4 bits so we can add us a pre-calculated table where we have 6 12 18 db and so on okay so then we have the rough value how do we get to better preci precision so if we take this those this value which is actually the mantissa uh, we can actually use those four bits to address another lookup table where we have a finer pre-calculated values in increments of 1 over 16 why of 1 over 16 because we use four bits here so we know they are going to be 16 um, uh, discrete values pre-calculated our resolution is going to be that okay so here's an example in with numbers so in our case with the number 3000 we know that the msb is on position 11 so 11 multiplied by 6.02 db this is the course value 66 point something which is far away from the 69 point something and now we take the we take the the mantissa so mantissa is one point and those bits so we consider this as a decimal number right even it, it, it's i know it's uh, it, why why we consider a decimal number because it's normalized to two right so this is actually this number is actually 1.437 how did i come up with this one is this one is the amber one and then we have number seven over 16 because we have 16 the resolution is 16 four bits and we add them together and we get this number now if we calculate the logarithm of obviously 20 multiplied by logarithm of that number we get this value which is the finer value so if we add the finer value with the course value we get this number 69.375 which is very close to what we want It's our the real value the real value the calculated value is 69.54 the calculated with calculator so high precision value so we are not far away. Look, we are in 0.2 over dB, less than 0.2 over the over dB, which is way more, way sufficient. Right? How we do this? Oh, so the trick is here. We need to figure out where the MSB is, so we know to figure out the exponent. So how do we do this? Those are OR gates. Each OR, every single one of these OR gates, they are four-bit OR gates. They take the first four uh, bits. The next four, the next four, the next four. So depending on the output of those, uh, um, let's say, look, for example, this one, all bits are zero. So the output is going to be zero when they're all together. The output of this is going to be a one, a one. Why? Because there are bits which are populated. So depending on this, we will know what's the interesting, where the interesting bits are in our uh, bit field of 16 bits. So if we decode this with a, lo with a lookup table, um, we kind of figure out okay i know my msb is somewhere here what do you mean somewhere here it's definitely bigger than eight right so it could be nine it could be 10 it could be 11 or it could be 12. i don't know in which position but we go further we say okay it's bigger than eight let's say eight for the time being in the same time we slice this why we slice it because 
we need we need those uh, bits in order to calculate the high precision value so everything that is in in um, based on this decoder we know exactly where to slice so we we take this 8 bit in an 8 bit uh, register now it might happen that you have the interesting bits are here and there are no other bits to slice here so we just populate them with zero anyway going to the next one so we we slice the interesting part we know that our msb is somewhere higher than eight now what do we do next oh we look at this for first four bits here the new msbs let's call them and we figure out by decoding them where exactly is the msb so by looking at this to a decoder we know okay do you know what we have actually a bit populated on the third position here so we know okay it's greater than eight and is on the third so eight plus three 11 so at this stage we know exactly the position of the msb and we can uh, we can use that to address a lookup table where we uh, it will give us a course value in db so it's basically 11 multiplied by 6.02 db and we'll have a value is that 66 db now in the same time we sliced the let's call it the change and we use those four bits to address another lookup table where we have uh, higher resolution pre-calculated values. We add them together and we fall on the, on the final value. This is the method. So this is different from the method which is presented in the, on the website where they shift, in order to, to figure out where the bit, where the MSB is, they shift the value until the, the MSB hits, hits the, the, the higher position in the, in the bit field. Because I don't like that because it's variable. Depending on the number, you need to shift more or less. Okay, so the, um, the detail. This is all implemented on three stages. So it's pipeline on three stages. On the first stage, we look where the interesting bits are and we slice those. We slice them. On the second one, we look exactly where the... We decode exactly where the MSB is. And in the same time, we address... We extract the four bits to to address the the higher granularity lookup table and of course on the third clock we add them together so we have the value the final value now it's very very compact it takes only 29 lots and 29 registers so um of course the 29 registers are because the, there is a um, pipelining so now let me show you the schematic the schematic of this is here so this is a bunch of 29 flip-flops and 29 lots. Now, the lots are not all four input lots. Some of them are five input you know, or uh, even six. I think this one is actually six. Yeah, you see them here listed. So this is it. I hope I didn't bore you to death. Uh, if you are still here, thanks for watching and uh, drop me a line if you need more um, information. Take care.